kicking off the 28-hour live transmission. It is 9.16 on this Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us. Already so deep into the year. September 16th, 2015. Over the next 28 hours, we have just an incredible lineup of live guests, uh, of uh, anchors and reporters that will also be hosting the show. Uh, I'll be popping in live as well. I will host three hours today and obviously three hours tomorrow. The full lineup is at Infowars.com forward slash Moneybomb. And we're also going to add a icon up at the upper right-hand corner of Infowars.com that will lead you directly there. Uh, this year, uh, the crew basically did the preparation for this special transmission uh, almost by themselves. Uh, I was not involved in it a lot. They've done an incredible job with uh, so much background research, uh, so much uh, documentary film production, uh, lining up the guest, and so much more. So I just want to salute uh, the work they've done. We're going to be sending out on Twitter and, of course, on Facebook more links to the 28-hour live broadcast transmission that's about to take place. Now, when we attempt to raise a million dollars today, that sounds like a lot of money, but when you actually know how much a media company, even a smaller one like this one, costs to run, it's basically what's needed for this year's satellite, closed captioning, uh, and some of the other accoutrement that goes along with the syndication of a radio slash TV transmission. Uh, but we already have a lot of affiliates picking us up, even though we had to officially announce that the satellite's been up for the last month. We're going to be talking about some of those new affiliates and some of the responses they've already been getting, UHF, VHF, and also major cable channels in cities like Houston. Uh, so I know we have program directors, station owners, channel owners, channel managers, program directors across the country that are listeners and quite frankly, we're just going directly to them and going directly to you, the listeners, to send them the links that we're going to be announcing and launching today and in the next few days that take people uh, to the affiliate pages uh, so that folks can find out more about that. But Infowars.com forward slash Moneybomb. Uh, we're also going to add to the front page a big red link that simply says, live feed 28 hour special broadcast or 28 hour special live broadcast live feed uh, so you can also send that link uh, to your friends and family out there so they can tune in uh, i will also uh, go over the schedule that i have for the 28 hour broadcast uh, and exactly who is coming up on the show today we're also obviously going to get into the news and have a lot of special guests. You'll probably have 10 minutes an hour of us talking about supporting InfoWars and the launch of the TV satellite system and the rest of it. Uh, and the main body of the next 28 hours will be at least three new documentaries that we've shot. One in Rome, one in Arkansas, and another here in Austin on some of the most important subjects out there, bar none. Some really powerful stuff inside the Vatican with a big Vatican insider that's blown the whistle years ago. And so much of what he said came true. He's Leo Zagami. I've never had him on because, quite frankly, I thought what he was saying was pretty outlandish. It shows how crazy stuff's gotten. People think, I'm outlandish? I mean, he said there's a pedophile ring inside the Vatican and they're going to make the Pope step down. They're going to put a Jesuit Pope in the current, when he said this about a year and a half before it happened and he just laid it all out and there I am on the outside of the Vatican with police coming over trying to stop us from filming even though we weren't on the Vatican and while he's talking for 30 minutes a thunderstorm starts behind him with lightning basically striking the Vatican and on the cover of his book there's lightning striking the Vatican I mean it was they wrote years ago it's really weird that's coming up well it's what so many people have been waiting for we haven't done a 24-hour broadcast in three years. We've done some 10-hour broadcasts covering elections, uh, five, six-hour special broadcasts covering some big events, three-hour transmissions covering debates, but we haven't done a fundraiser in three years. The last Money Bomb we did was three years ago. It was actually one of our listeners, I guess it was a decade ago, that came up with the first Money Bomb 
for Ron Paul, and our show got behind it. Ron Paul didn't even know what it was, and he raised something like $3 million in one day. And then the folks that launched the Ron Paul Money Bomb said, we're doing one for you. And I was in a 4,500 square foot former mechanics garage that had a small TV slash radio studio in it, and that had a shipping department in the building across the street. And there was about 10 people in there. And I did not want to get more employees. I did not want to make more films. I did not want to work more than 14 hours a day. Uh, I was, I guess, under enemy propaganda that it was bad if I made any money and it was bad if I expanded, that I was going to be like a priest or something up in my high tower writing manuscripts or something. I was so, so good and so pious that I drove an old Tahoe truck. Nothing wrong with that. Old Tahoe SUV, and I lived in a uh, lower middle class, uh, pretty much blue collar house. And I put 99% of the money, 98% of the money that came into Infowars.com back into the operation. So this guy comes along and says, well, you just raised $3 million. It was mainly your people. The fact that you plugged it for Ron Paul, Ron Paul came on and thanked us and said, yes, it was mainly your listeners. So they started their own money bombs. One of them raised $7 million. And that was our listeners that did that. I, I'm not taking the credit. But then this fella comes along, and he, the guy that invented money bombs, the guy that, I forget his name, I'm going to look it up. I just tell these stories, stream of consciousness, didn't even intend to tell the story, just was thinking about it, so I told it. He, he's the guy that launched the Ron Paul blimps around the country. And of course, Ron Paul didn't save the country. He didn't win the presidency, but he promoted libertarian ideas and a juxtaposition of the establishment Republican Party and the Democrats that helped launch the modern Tea Party, which is one of our best hopes out there. One of our last best hopes, in my view. That's why it's under universal attack. So this guy starts the money bomb, and I ignore it. And thousands pledge to give to it. And I ignore it. About two days before, people are saying, why aren't you covering your own money bomb? Well, I was going to ignore it. Then the day of, or the day before, 50-something thousand dollars had already come in on this third-party money bomb. So I call the guy up and I say, look, uh, I'm not going to really promote this. You can just write me a check for whatever it is and I'll put it towards things. But I'm really maxed out right now. I want to be a radio talk show host and make films. I can't do more. I've got two small children, three now. I can't do this. So I said, I told you don't do the money bomb. So I'd appreciate it if you just stopped promoting it and didn't make this a big deal. Because I was under such mind control at the time that I thought I was this wonderful, pure, good person because my, my car would break down every few months and I didn't like having money and I didn't like having responsibility and I enjoyed being humble and simple. And I understand that that's something we see in the New Testament and is one aspect of Christ, I understand that. But the enemy was always attacking me on national news saying he wants money, he wants your money, he, he's into money, it's all for money. Don't, don't support him. Don't buy his videos that I gave out for free online, which killed sales, by the way. And he, the guy said, look, going to send you all the money, and you really need it. You, know, you need to expand. And a half million dollars came in. And I went into Weldon Henson, who was the head of the shipping department, been working for me three years, Air Force vet, great patriot. And I said, Weldon, you're a good, competent guy. You've got businesses on the side. I said, I don't want the responsibility. Can you go find us cheaper space to rent, maybe 10,000 square feet, and we'll just uh, start making more films. And I guess with this money, I'll bring in other filmmakers and make other films that reach tens of millions of people because our films were reaching tens of millions of people. InfoWars was already a major phenomenon. The reason I tell the story is understand where we came from. Then I'll get into the huge breaking news. And most of this 28-hour broadcast will not be me talking about the history of InfoWars uh, or ourselves or even fundraising. It's going to be talking about the mission of independent press and where we're going. And Weldon found the cheapest warehouse but, but, but air-conditioned facility in the city. Um, it's still some of the best area. And so we moved in here. And then I had the responsibility to try to spend that half million dollars 100% of it against the globalist. And it bore fruit incredibly. And out of that, here we are, eight years later, in a 30-plus thousand square foot facility 
not reaching two or three million people a week, conservatively, but reaching 20 plus million a week. And by the way, they brought in the metrics to my house last night, Buckley Hammond and Anthony Gucciardi that I have working with outside IT consulting firms. And they said, you're giving people two-year-old numbers. Here they are. They pulled them up in front of me uh, on all the big third-party sites and our own internal server systems. InfoWars now reaches 41 million individual different people a month. That's individual different people. It has a reach of 1.4 billion total views uh, on the website. Uh, if you count all of our social media, it is several billion more individual users. Uh, we did a metric run with a major company and looked at our YouTube views just on the top 500 sites carrying our videos. Uh, and it's over 150 million views a month. And so they're now collating all of that data, we'll be releasing soon, but it appears we're reaching upwards of three and a half billion individual people per month. There is six billion people that have some access to the internet, some access, three and a half that have heavy access, if you look at the latest numbers. Um, it's clearly probably a billion people or so, but they're using different phones, different computers, different devices. We don't think we really have three plus billion people of the globe tuning in. It appears to be around a billion. So I don't like to get killed. I don't like to get in fights with the globalist, but they already know all this. So I, I don't want to brag about what's happened. It's actually like standing on the edge of a 600 foot cliff about to dive into the ocean. If you don't dive exactly right, you'll rip your eyeballs out and break your neck. So this is our responsibility, it's what we're doing, and it's because of you, the listeners and the viewers and our sponsors and our affiliates and your prayers and your support, you built InfoWars. And the people in the control room built InfoWars. And the reporters, the writers, the customer service people, the video editors, people like Rob Jacobson built InfoWars. Uh, people like uh, Darren McBreen and Jakari Jackson with that great intro, that you just saw, that we just played. People like Jakari Jackson built InfoWars. Your love of liberty built InfoWars. And the globalists are going to demonize us and attack us all day long because we are effective. We do scare them. And on all media platforms combined, we're reaching a month, a billion people. That's a big deal. And quite frankly, I look at some of our production value because we're by the seat of our pants, we're busy, we're a small crew doing too much, and I get upset about it, I get upset at myself, but it doesn't matter because we're doing it from a pure heart, we're doing it for the greater good, we're doing it to be honorable, we're trying to tell the truth, and that's what people resonate with. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you what we're fighting, though, because good people tend to hate ourselves. Good people tend to be tough on ourselves. God knows I am. And God's really laid it on my heart. It's time to start loving ourselves and the gifts God's given us and appreciate our gifts. Instead of, instead of beating ourselves over the head, it's time to go after the globalists, not ourselves. Coming out in the next segment, I'm going to read for radio and TV listeners and viewers the two-day schedule, the 28-hour broadcast that's a, a day and four hours, so it spans over two days. You're going to have the Alex Jones show the first three hours, then Overdrive with Anthony Gucciardi and Dr. Edward Group, then David Knight with Gerald Salente, Jakari Jackson and Leanne McAdoo. Then you'll have the InfoWars Nightly News with David Knight. Then you'll have Mystery Science GOP Debate with David Knight, Jakari Jackson, and Leanne McAdoo. I'll also be popping into the end of that. And then I will host uh, basically uh, 10 to midnight with Larry Nichols in a special documentary up there in Arkansas interviewing him where he goes to so many of the key places. See, I said I'll tell you next segment. I'll just start doing it now. Um, then uh, midnight to 1 a.m., Rob Dew and Leo Zagami uh, from Rome, the special documentary shot in Rome with him, extremely powerful inside the Vatican. Joe Biggs, Darren McBreen with Larry Pinckney of the good Black Panther Party, the original Black Panther Party that was not kill the cops and cause race war. That's why the government shut him down. Uh, 2 a.m. to 4 a.m., Joe Biggs with a whole bunch of special guests. Uh, we've got Paul Joseph Watson, 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., Kit Daniels and Rob Jacobson, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., Kit Daniels and Mikhail Phelan, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., uh, Paul Joseph Watson and Rob Dew, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., and then uh, we have the video premiere of Demonic Possession of Vatican Exposed.